Well, no, I mean, the government has to run out of vagina bribe money, right? That's what's got to happen. I mean, the, the relationships between the genders are so viciously distorted by the giant alpha NASA dick of the state squirting molten tax money all over the women that they have no possible conception of what it is to actually have a positive and useful relationship with a man object. Men are tax slaves for women as a whole, right? And there's lots of great women out there. This is very much a generalization. But so what? Doesn't mean it's invalid, right? Generalization. Asians are short. I know it's all Asian. Now out. Well, okay, go find your unicorn. But the reality is that the, the government has bought the hearts and minds and souls of so many women that the idea that women can shit all over men because men aren't there voluntarily. Right? Expecting women as a whole to be nice to men as a whole these days is sort of like expecting the slave owner to be really nice to the field hands. <laughs> Doesn't really work that. Yeah, it'll happen occasionally, but I wouldn't put a lot of money on it. And until all of that normalizes, right? I mean, women are going to ride the giant alpha cock of the state right into financial oblivion, and then things are going to right themselves. And when the, when the checks stop coming and the vampire squid sucking tentacle teeth vaginas of the single moms in particular unclamp themselves from the giant <laughs> constitutional uh, state and they're going to have to sort of squelch on over and attach themselves to some other man. Uh, but it's going to have to be voluntary. And then when you have voluntary relationships, you can have quality relationships. And if you don't have voluntary relationships, you can't have any kind of quality or any kind of appreciation. And so right now, uh, women are in the category of, um, you know, the Soviet captains of industry. The customers are all captive and nobody has uh, any choice in the matter. Uh, they can, um, you know, wave around their pheromones and vaginas when they're young, thus dazing men into acting against reason, common sense and experience and getting often married to these unstable people. And then what they can do is if they get unhappy, well, they can just sick the dogs of the state on them because you see men are just, uh, women are so independent, they don't need men unless there's any kind of problem, in which case, who do they call? Quite a lot of men with guns because apparently that's called being equal and liberated. And then they can get the state to give them lots of money or if some guy bangs them and runs off, well, they don't have to worry about it because uh, the government's going to swoop in and take care of all of that uh, mess for them. And, uh, and uh, so that's, you know, women don't have to be that nice, which is why you see these just endless and boring and repetitive and relentless insults upon a man's intelligence. Like I watched, God help me, a confusing mess of a film with uh, a uh, George Clooney who seems like he's gone through a time dilation machine and aged in about 10 years. I don't know what Emil's doing to him, but it's not injecting him with youth serum. But uh, I watched this film called Tomorrowland, and uh, I thought maybe but I'd been it had been recommended as something to review. And <laughs> oh my god, um, she's fifteen. She, now her father is a NASA engineer, NASA engineer, and a guy. Now guys, of course, do very well on visual spatial recognition. They are way ahead of women as far as that goes. And at the very top tiers of intelligence, uh, men outnumber women by about eight to one. And at the very bottom tiers, right, in the bell curve of intelligence, women's is much more narrow and men's is much more spread out, which is why there are more men who get uh, Nobel Prizes in physics and more men who are homeless. And um, anyway, so this is the, this NASA, uh, he's a NASA engineer and he's trying to figure out something and he's just staring at it like some physical contraption he's put together. NASA engineer, he's got to be in his early 40s, he's highly educated, he's been working at NASA for a long time. You know, clearly he's skilled at this. He's in the very top percentiles of male visual spatial reasoning. He's got years of experience, years and years of education, and he's trying to puzzle something out. His 15-year-old daughter walks into the room, and she just doesn't even, barely even glances at what he's working on, moves one connector from one place to the other, and it all just works. And this is what you see, uh, this uh, unbelievable, relentless, insane appeal to female vanity. You know, there's an old saying that nobody ever went broke underestimating the intelligence of the American public. And I'll tell you something else, people. Nobody ever went broke underestimating women's capacity to drink up sycophantic vanity. Ugh! You know, it's like in 101 Dalmatians. Why are you? You're such a sycophant. Why are you such a sycophant? What's the matter with you? And he's like, uh, what kind of sycophant do you want me to be? <laughs> And this is, uh, I, I, if somebody praises me too much, I start to get nauseous. Like, I start to feel like, get your creepy little, uh, you know, forehead-tugging, manipulative uh, stuff out of my brain. I push back with, with excessive praise because, you know, it's 
basically a precursor to getting robbed blind. Ladies who are listening to political speeches, but that's a topic for another time. But women, unbelievable. They'll just drink it up. And the fact that women can just sit there with this endless flattery pouring in and not go like, hey, I think we're being played. It's like, is there, you know, I, I drop a fucking sponge in the ocean. I don't expect the sponge to drink up the ocean. I expect at some point it's going to get saturated and start oozing seawater back out again. But you drop women into an endless sea of flattery, they soak up the entire goddamn planet of water. I mean, they suck the vapor out of the sky. They suck the viscosity out of my eyeballs and I got to use eye drops because it's just like <laughs> giant sucking sound of women sucking up all the vanity in the known universe all the praise oh you guys are women are wonderful you guys are so great it's like I was talking about the movie inside out the women have all the sensitive loving empathetic feelings what do the guys get paranoia and rage <laughs> it's like yeah, at some point I mean I'm waiting for this moment where the sponge starts shitting out some seawater. Like, I'm just, I'm just waiting for the moment where women say, okay, okay, come on. That's too much. You know, we're right. not that great. <laughs> you know, come on. I mean, we have a flaw or two. Don't we? Don't we, girls? But instead, it's just, it's like a bottomless hole. You could just grind up male testicles, get this giant hose of emasculated ex-manhood and just pour it down this hole in the ground. And it just, what does it go out into space at the other end? That's like, when does it, when is it enough? When do women start rolling their eyes when a guy can't figure out the remote? <laughs> and the women are just like, oh, you just do this, <laughs> right? I mean, when do women, when is it enough? When is your vanity fed to the point where you get sick? How much fucking candy can you eat before you start shitting M&Ms out of your ears? Like, holy shit, I just I had to get this rant off my chest because I was just looking at it the other day. Like, I, I just maybe I just saw one too many commercials where the guy was a complete moron. Or maybe I just saw one too many women can do everything without training, whereas men are just trailing along like lost little puppy dogs. It's like, oh, my God. I mean, or maybe I've just been reading Human Accomplishment by Charles Murray too much. I don't know. But it's something like along these things. And it's just like, ladies, do you ever get sick of people blowing smoke up your ass? You got so much smoke up your ass, you're basically Venus by now. And I don't mean Venus the goddess, I mean Venus the corroded, acidic, sulfuric acid, barren rock closer to the sun than we are. Ah, ladies, let it be enough. Let it be enough, dear God. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Hitler at Nuremberg. It's like, wait, there aren't enough Germans here. <laughs> Can we find some more? Can we import some? I think there were some in <laughs> Georgia. Anyway, all right, so um, the idea that you can normalize this without the state running out of money to bribe women, well, when the state runs out of money, women who want to have kids, women who don't want to have kids can do whatever they want, of course, but if you want to have kids and you want to be a good mom, well, then you need a guy who's going to provide for you. Maybe you go provide for the guy. I don't know, maybe he can be stay at home, but for the first two years, it really should be you because, you know, you come with the milk trucks on the, on the chest. And so um, this, is, this is another thing, too, where uh, they, women just they have no sense of limitations. They have no sense of limitations. Like they consider it a personal insult that you can't be in two places at the same time. Like somehow not only every man, woman, and child uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the planet needs to bow to women five times a day as if they're Mecca and we're hysterical religionists, but also reality itself has to, to bow to women. Like I was reading this article the other day about, you know, well, I'm a single mom, but I work two jobs and I'm going to school. It's like, then you're a shitty mom because you're doing all that stuff and not taking care of your kids. And if you're taking care of your kids the amount that you're supposed to, then you're not going to be very good in the workforce. And you shouldn't be because you can't parent and work at the same time. But women have been so, it's so destructive. It's so enabling. It's so like, Telling someone with a shitty voice they're the best singer ever, it really is the most unbelievably destructive thing that you can do for any group of people as a whole. But women, it's like, nobody says there are limitations. And women are genuinely and deeply shocked. And I see this all the time, all the time, when I do these videos on single moms. Well, you see, I'm a single mom, but I do all of this stuff too, and I've not taken a dime from the government. And I have a have Okay, then you're working two jobs. You're a shitty mom. Sorry, you're not there. You're not there. I lived that. I know what that's like. You're a shitty mom. If you're a good worker, if you've got kids and you're a good worker, you're a shitty mom. No, it's quality time. No, it's not. No, it's not. We didn't evolve for like bungee parenting. Well, kids, 
I'm going to leave you in the woods with a sharpened stick. Hope the bears don't come by. I'll be back tomorrow for 15 to 20 minutes of block time. We'll call that excellent parenting. That's so R selected. I mean, God, quality time is just the most ultimate R selected bunch of crap that I've ever heard. And so the, the, the idea that there's any kind of limitations on women. Well, there's a, 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 a gender gap in pay. It's like, yes, there is, because men work harder than women. Sorry, it's a fact, it's a reality. Reality is sexist, and then you need a you need a hug room because two and two make four, and this is supposed to be empowering to women. God, give me a like a, a, you know an Iron Maiden, Phyllis Schlafly, Ann Coulter, Margaret Thatcher, Ayn Rand, goddess of power, anytime over these like. Well, what do you mean I can't be in two places at the same time, and that makes me either a bad mom or a bad worker? <laughs> And then apparently tears just dissolve balls. This is like how you reduce balls. You just sand them down with endless female tears and hysteria. Ugh, oh, I don't know. Anyway, so I don't know how to solve it because it, there's no amount of rhetoric that can overcome financial incentive. You know, you really shouldn't cash in that lottery ticket because you see that's hard from taxes. And hard. Yeah, yeah, good luck, right? You can't. I mean, you can't. And so where the financial incentive exists, reason and evidence will just go to die a quiet and withering death, you know, like a fungus in direct sunlight or something that needs sunlight underneath the fungus. Don't go where you're in direct contradiction to um, direct financial incentive. Forget it. People, you know, they're not stupid. They just follow the money. They follow the financial incentive and they make up all this bullshit behind them. You know, can, can, can we get a reasonably open and critical and competent intellectual set of debates in society? No. No, because of academia. Because all of the smart people are captured by the state and bribed to become slowly degenerating idiots, with the exception of everyone who's ever been on this show or whoever will be on this show. Want to put make that very clear. But for the most part, the corrosive effect of the corruptions of government power. I just did a video about this for more of this. Uh, but um, the corrosive effects of, of government monopoly power over intellectuals has just meant that there's absolutely uh, nothing but um, vicious petty fiefdom internist in religious warfare between people of various ideologies who never have to sand down the rough edges of those ideologies through the complicated and challenging interaction with people who may not give a shit about what you do and you have to provide value to them no matter what. So um, love women as a whole, and I, I don't blame women as a whole for ending up this way. I don't even blame culture that much for ending up uh, this way. It's just what happens when you put these balls in motion, so to speak, when you start channeling trillions of dollars to women or trillions of dollars to whoever, it's just going to change who they are. It's going to change how they act. It's not that women are bad. It's just that this is it's like, it's like calling Soviet factory workers lazy. It's like, nope, they pretend to pay us. And we pretend to work. And so it's not anybody's fault and it's not about women being bad. It's just that when this all change, when this all changes, when the government runs out of money, well, we'll see. And then things will become normalized.